Okay, so we're going to look at verse 4. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Um, I, my version, then it, it has a full stop there and then says in love and then verse 5 starts after that. But I'm just going to go to the end of the sentence because that kind of makes sense. Um, this idea that he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Um, it's extraordinary. The extraordinary thing that we can't get our head around is the fact that God knew us and thought of us even before the creation of the world. So in that space where the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, in perfect unity, perfect oneness, they are together in a space that we can't comprehend, that they're in a... Um, I, I can't get my head around the idea of everything of the universe here not being in existence, but the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are there. Um, pretty extraordinary. But it's in that space that he'd already, he, he, God thought through all of history and he saw everything that was going to play out. And these kinds of concepts are so hard for our brains to get around, but he saw everything. That doesn't mean that he made, controlled uh, or, or forced everything to happen, but he saw how history was going to play out. And in that, he saw you. He saw you before he, he even started speaking the universe into existence. He, there's nothing that has happened throughout history that was a shock to God. There was no twist that he didn't see coming um, because he's God. If, if there was something that happened that he um, didn't see coming, then that would undermine everything that we understand about what God, who, what God is. He saw it all, and He chose us in Him. Um, there's, there's different thoughts on, on, like in a couple of verses it'll say, or in the next verse, sorry, it'll say predestined, this idea of predestination um, that comes up in Scripture can be a real, um, when you think about it, can be a real stumbling block. And, and there's two kind of, generally, two thoughts on, on this. There's the, those who say that God has already chosen some people and not chosen others um, to be in his kingdom. Um, and that can't be changed. So the people who haven't been chosen... Um, they will never be able to choose God. I'm not in that camp. Um, and I'm still trying to figure out exactly, and I don't think I will actually, obviously, uh, figure it all out. However, for me, in, my, in the way that I see it, I see that God, um, he, His will is that none should perish, as it tells us in, in Timothy. His... He doesn't want anyone to perish. And so, as we see in John 3.16, whoever believes um, will have eternal life. So there's a whoever there. Um, and in, in John, uh, 1 John, it tells us that he died for the sins of the whole world. Um, Jesus did enough to pay for everybody's sin. It's not just that there's a limited atonement that... Oh, only this many can fit in, so the rest of you are oh, well too bad, so sad. I believe that none of us can know God without Him revealing Himself. Right? We can't, we can't in our own strength somehow search and search and then find God when He wasn't wanting to be found. The truth is that we can only find God if He has stepped out of His realm of unseen and, and, and 
I guess, revealed something in our hearts of his realness. But the question then is, and this is where the two camps kind of divide, um, can you not choose God if you see him? And so one camp says that his, his grace is irresistible. That means if you see him, you can't not choose him. Um, so for me, I believe at this stage that we can, um, God can reveal himself and we can, I guess, um, choose not to respond to his grace. So in this verse then, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world. For me, I read that as he looks through history and he sees um, all those who are going to respond to his grace. And those people who are going to respond are chosen then to be holy and blameless in his sight. Now, holy means, as we looked at in verse 1, means set apart. So God sees those whose hearts respond to him and he sets them apart. But before the creation of the world, he knew who he was going to set apart uh, to be holy and blameless in his sight and, and um as we just looked at in verse 3, one of those spiritual blessings of justification is that you get cleansed of all your sin, plus Christ's righteousness gets imputed onto you, which is just amazing. So he looks through history, he sees those whose hearts will respond to him, and those are the ones that are in that chosen space to receive um, a setting apart and a cleansing and being made righteous and blameless. Uh, through the work of Jesus. Um, and so it's just amazing. I just find it amazing that none of the outworking of God's plan was a catch-up um, reaction to what we were doing. He knew everything that was going to happen. And so he set in motion from the beginning his plan of redemption, his plan of salvation, despite our mess and there's this amazing weave that is is quite mind-blowing of our free will our ability to choose and do the right or or wrong and there's constant um encouragement in scripture to make a choice about how we're going to live um, we choose either to walk away from god or we choose to move towards him and allow his goodness to be expressed in our lives but in all of our choosing, there's the grand picture that we can't see, that he has woven the glorious story of salvation uh, for all of history. And it's going to come to a, a climax when Jesus returns. And then um, we will all be held accountable for what we've done with Jesus. Um, but this is the full plan. So from before the creation of the world, he chose us who respond to Jesus to be holy and blameless in his sight, which is amazing. It's just amazing that it's not, it's not dependent on how good you are. Before the creation of the world, he chose you to be holy and blameless in his sight. So you can rest in that. If you've responded to Jesus, you can rest in what he's accomplished for you. So that's verse 4.